Welcome to theCUBE's coverage of AWS Storage Day. We're here with a couple of AWS product experts covering AWS's migration and transfer of services. Randy Booten is the general manager of AWS Data Sync and Matt Matthews, GM of AWS Transfer Family. Guys, good to see you again. Thanks Great for coming on. Dave. Yeah, thanks. So, Look, we saw during the pandemic the acceleration to, to cloud migration. We've we've tracked that. We've quantified that. What's what's driving that today? Yeah. So Dave, uh, great to be back here. Uh, saw you last year on Storage Day, and uh, nice to be setting. in studio yeah, too, yeah, isn't it? Thanks you guys together. for coming in. <laughs> we've uh, conquered COVID. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, it, this is a great question. I think uh, you know, digital transformation is really uh, what's driving a lot of the the. Uh, um, focus right now from companies they uh, and you know it's really not about just driving down costs it's also about you know what are the opportunities available uh, once you get into the cloud in terms of um, you know how how um, how what does that unlock in terms of innovation so you know companies are focused on the usual things um, optimizing costs but ensuring they have the right security um, and um, agility, uh, you know, a lot has happened over the last year and companies need to be able to react, right? They need to be able to react quickly. So cloud gives them a lot of these capabilities, but the real benefit that we see is that once your data is in the cloud, um, it opens up the power of the cloud for analytics, uh, for new application development uh, and things of that sort. So uh, what we're seeing is that companies are really just focused on uh, understanding a cloud migration strategy and how they can get there, uh, get their get their data there, uh, and then use that, unlock that data for the value. Yeah, I man, if I've said it once, I've said it a hundred times, if you, if you weren't a digital business during the pandemic, you were out of business. You know, migration, you know, historically is a bad word, right, in, in, in IT. You see IOs here and you go, ugh. So what's the playbook for taking years of data on-prem and moving it into the cloud? What are you seeing as best practice there? Yeah, so as you said, Dave, migration historically has been painful, right? Uh, and it's a daunting task uh, for any business or any IT uh, executive. Uh, but fortunately, AWS has a broad suite of capabilities to help enable these migrations. Uh, and by that I mean we have tools to help you understand your existing on-prem workloads, understand what services in the AWS uh, uh, offering uh, uh, align to those uh, those needs, uh, but also help you estimate the cost. Right, cost is a big is a big part of this move. Uh, we can help you estimate that cost and predict that cost, and then use tools like DataSync uh, to help you move that data when that time comes. So you're saying you help help predict the cost of the migration or the cost of of, of, of running in the cloud or of both? running in the cloud, right? Yeah. yeah, we can help estimate the runtime based on the performance that we uh, we assess on prem. We can then project that into a cloud service uh, and estimate that cost. So can you guys explain data sync? Sometimes I get confused. Data sync, you know, what's the difference between data sync and storage gateway? And we, I want to get into like when we should use each, but let's start there if we could. Yeah, sure, I'll take that. So storage gateway is primarily a means for a customer to access their data in the cloud from on-prem, right? So if you, have an, if you have an application that you want to keep on-prem, you're not ready yet to migrate that application to the cloud, gateway is a, is a strong solution but because you can move a lot of that data, you know, a lot of your cold or long tail data into something like S3 or EFS, uh, but still access it from your on-prem location. Data sync's all about data movement. Right, so if you need to move your data from A to B, data sync is your optimized solution to do that. Are you finding that people, that's ideally a one-time move or is it actually, you know, sometimes you're seeing customers do it more than, again, moving data. If I don't move as much data as you need to, but no more, kind of yeah. to, to paraphrase Einstein. So, <laughs> what, what we're seeing in data sync is that, you know, customers, uh, customers do use data sync for their initial migration. Um, they'll also, as, as Matt was mentioning earlier, once you get your data into the cloud, that flywheel of potential starts to take hold. And customers want to ultimately move that data within the cloud to optimize its value. So you might move from service to service, you might move from EFS to S3, et cetera, um, to enable this, the cloud flywheel to benefit you. DataSync does that as well. So customers use us to initially migrate, they use us to move within the cloud, uh, and we also, we just recently uh, announced um, service for other clouds. So you can actually bring data in now from Google and Azure uh, as well. Oh, how convenient. <laughs> so, okay, but so that's cool. So you, you, you helped us understand the use cases, but, yeah. but, but can we dig one more layer? Like sure. what protocols are supported? I'm trying to understand really the right fit for the right job. Yeah, so um, that's really important. So for transfer specifically, you know, one of the things that we see uh, with customers is, you know, you've got 
uh, obviously a lot of internal data within your company, but uh, today it's a very highly interconnected world. So companies deal with lots of business partners. Uh, and historically they've used, um, you know, there's a, a big prevalence of using file transfer uh, to exchange data with, with business partners. And uh, as you can imagine, there's a lot of value in that data, right? Sometimes it's purchase orders, uh, inventory data from suppliers or things like that. So, um, so you know, historically customers have had uh, protocols like SFTP or FTP uh, to help them interface with uh, or exchange data or files with external partners. So, uh, so for transfer, that's what we focus on is helping customers exchange data over those existing protocols that they've used for, for many years. Uh, and the real focus is uh, it's it's uh, one thing to migrate your own data into the cloud, but you can't force thousands or tens of thousands sometimes of partners to also uh, work in a different way to get you their data. So we want to make that very seamless for customers using the same exact protocols like SFTP that they've used for years. Uh, we just announced uh, AS2 protocol, which is uh, very heavily used in supply chains to exchange uh, inventory and uh, information across multi-tiers of, uh, of partners and, and things of that nature. So. Uh, we're really focused on letting customers um, uh, not have to impact their partners uh, and how they work and how they exchange, uh, but also take advantage of the data. So get that data into the cloud so they can imme immediately unlock the value with analytics. So AS2 is, is specifically in the context of supply chain, and I'm presuming it's you know secure and you know kind of governed and, and yeah. safe. Can you explain that a little bit? Yeah. So AS2 has a lot of really interesting features for uh, transactional uh, type of exchanges. So it, it's uh, uh, it has signing and encryption built in, and also has uh, notification. So uh, you can basically say, Hey, I sent you this purchase order, and prove that that uh, you know that you received it. Um, it has a capability called non-repudiation, -repudi which means it's actually a legal uh, transaction. Um, so those things are very important in transactional type of exchanges and allows customers in uh, supply chain chains, whether it's uh, you know vendors dealing with their suppliers or transportation partners or things like that, to um, to leverage file transfer um, for those types of exchanges. So encryption, provenance of of, of transactions. Yeah. Am I correct? Without having to use the blockchain and all yeah. the overhead yeah. associated yeah, it's with got that. Some uh, built-in capabilities. I mean, I love blockchain, but, yes. but you know, there's drawbacks. <laughs> yeah. But, exactly. Then that's why it's been uh, popular. In, it, in, in that's those. really interesting because Andy Jassy one day I was on a phone call with him and John Furrier and we, we were talking up you know crypto and blockchain. He said, well. Well, why do it? Explain to me, you know, Jassy, right? He yeah. always wants to go deeper. Explain why I can't do this with some other approach. And so, you know, I think he was recognizing some of the drawbacks. So that's a, that's kind of a cool thing. And it leads me, you know, it's, we're running this obviously today, August 10th. Yesterday, we had our SuperCloud event in Palo Alto on August 9th. And it's all about the ecosystem. One of the observations we made about the 2020s is the cloud is so totally different now. People are building value on top of, you know, the infrastructure that you guys have built out over the last 15 years. And so once an organization's data gets into the cloud, how does it affect, and it relates to, to AS2 somewhat, how does it affect the, the workflows in terms of interacting with external partners and other ecosystem players that are also in the cloud? Yeah, great, yeah. It's, um... Again, we, we want to try and not have to affect those those workflows, right? Take them as they are as much as possible. Get them, get the data exchange working. Uh, one of the things that, that we focus on a lot is, uh, you know, how do you process this data once it comes in? Like uh, every company has, you know, governance requirements, security requirements, and things like that. So they usually have a set of things that they need to automate and orchestrate for the data as it's coming in. And, and a lot of these companies use something called managed file transfer solutions that allow them to uh, automate and orchestrate those things. Um, we also see that many times this is very uh, customer specific. So, you know, a, a bank might have a certain set of um, processes they have to follow and needs to be customized. As you know, AWS is a great uh, solution for building custom solutions. And we have, we actually today we're just announcing um, a, a new set of, of partners and a program called the Service Delivery Program with uh, AWS Transfer Family that allows uh, uh, customers to work with partners that are very well versed in transfer family and related services to help build a, a very specific solution that allows them to build that automation orchestration and keep their partners uh, kind of unaware that they're, they're, they're interfacing in, in a different way. Uh, and, and once this data is in the cloud, or, or actually maybe stays on-prem mm -hmm. in some cases, but it basically plugs in to the AWS services portfolio, the whole security model, the governance model, shared responsibility you know, comes in, 
Um, is that right? Um, it's all sort of all in there? Yeah, yeah uh, that, that's right. That's exactly right. Um, and we're working with, you know, it's all about the customer's needs mm -hmm. and, and making sure that, you know, their investment in AWS doesn't disrupt, you know, their, their existing workflows and their relationships with their, uh, with their customers and their partners. Uh, and that's exactly what you know, Matt's been describing is we're, t we're taking a close look at how we can extend the, the value of AWS, integrate into our customers' workflows, and bring that value to them with minimal investment or disruption. So, follow up on that. So, so I love that because less disruption means right. it's easier, less friction. And I think of, I'm trying to think of examples, like think about um, uh, uh, data deduplication, like mm -hmm. purpose built backup appliances, right? Like, data domain won that battle because they could just plug right in. You know, Avamar, they were trying to get you to redo everything. Okay, and so we, we saw that, that movie play out. At the same time, I've talked to CIOs who say, I love that, but the cloud opens up all these cool new opportunities for me to change my operating model. So are you seeing that as well? Where, okay, we make it easy to get in, we're not disrupting workflows, and then once they get in, they say, well, if we did it this way, we'd take out a bunch of costs, we'd accelerate our business, what's that dynamic like? It, exactly that, right? So that move to the cloud's a continuum, right? Mm -hmm. We don't think it's going to be binary, there's always going to be something on-prem, we accept uh, that, but there's a continuum there. So day one, they'll migrate a portion of that workload into the cloud, start to extract and see value there, but then they'll continue, as you said, they'll continue to see opportunities, right? With all of the various capabilities that AWS has to offer, all the value that represents, They'll start to see that opportunity and then start to engage and consume more, uh, more of those features over time. Great, all right, give us the, the bumper sticker. What's next in <laughs> transfer services from your perspectives? Yeah, so uh, you know, we're obviously always going to listen to our customers. That's our that's our, our focus. You guys uh, say that a lot. <laughs> we say that a lot. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so we're we're focused on helping customers again increase that level of automation orchestration. Um, again, that suite of capabilities generally in our industry uh, known as managed file transfer. How you know when a when a file comes in, it needs to get you know maybe uh, encrypted or de-encrypted uh, uh, de or compressed or decompressed, uh, scanned for viruses. Those kind of uh, capabilities make that easier for customers. If you remember last year. At Storage Day, we announced uh, an audit, a low-code workflow framework right. that allows customers to kind of build those uh, steps, and we're continuing to add uh, built-in capabilities to uh, to that, so customers can easily just say, "Okay, I want I want these set of activities to happen when when files come in and out." So that's cool. that's really what's next for us. All right, Randy, we'll give you the last word. Bring, bring us home. I'm going to surprise you with the customer theme. Oh, uh, there, great! Yeah, Love yeah, it. yeah. So we're listening to customers and what they're asking for are. Uh, support for more sources. So we'll be adding support for more cloud sources, more on-prem sources, giving the customers more options. Uh, also performance and usability, right? So we want to make it easier as the enterprise continues to consume the cloud, we want to make data sync and the movement of their data as easy as possible. You know, I've always said it starts with the data, S3, that was the first service. And, and you know, the, the other thing I've said a lot is the cloud is expanding. We're seeing connections to on-prem. We're seeing connections out to the edge. It's just becoming this massive global system as, as, as Werner Vogel talks about all the time. Thanks guys, really appreciate it. Dave, thank you very much. Thanks Dave. All right, keep it right there for more coverage of AWS Storage Day 2022. You're watching theCUBE.